And this is the Yellow Brick Road to Digitization, Two Small Kansas Colleges and Their Journey. And this is going to be presented by Gloria Creed uh, Dikugo. I apologize if I slaughtered that name. Uh, she is the Director of Library Services from Ottawa University. And Danielle Dian, Director of DePaul Library at University of St. Mary. So I'm going to pass this over to them. Thank you. This is Danielle Dion. Okay, well, I'm excited to participate in this um, conference, and I hope you can learn some things from Gloria and my presentation. I'm very excited to share our journey, which began around two years ago. Um, both Gloria and I applied for the Consortium on Digital Resources for Teaching and Learning grant. This was a grant sponsored by the Council for Independent Colleges and also co-sponsored by the Andrew Mellon Foundation. And it is a three-year cycle. So um, what was very exciting for us is that it was designed for independent colleges who do not have any kind of digitization efforts currently um, being worked on um, from in a large scale. We may be saving items um, in PDF and um, in, in TIFF files and keeping them on a server somewhere, but um, it was designed to increase awareness of small independent colleges, special collections and archives and getting content out to um, a national and an international audience um, through participating in Art Store's shared shelf software. And so this presentation is going to walk through bo both what I did um, at the University of St. Mary it located in Leavenworth, Kansas, and then also what Gloria did um, at Ottawa University. And so I would encourage you to um, visit um, the links that we provided in our presentation. We have linked to um, what the CIC's um, information is about our consortium on digital resources and how we use Shared Shelf with that. And then we've also listed the participating colleges. There are around 42 to 44 participating colleges all over the United States who are um, participating in um, this consortium. I'll walk through a little bit about the actual grant. So um, to begin the journey, um, I began my um, journey to um, participate in this consortium around two and a half years ago when I started doing my grant application. We actually had to designate what special collection we would be using for this grant, and I chose to focus on University of St. Mary's Abraham Lincoln collection. We have a 10,000 item Abraham Lincoln collection here and it was donated to the Sisters of Charity, who are our sponsors here at the university. And it was donated around 30 years ago. And this collection is very important to Leavenworth because Abraham Lincoln's first presidential campaign speech was done here in downtown Leavenworth. So we were the um, grateful recipients of a 10,000 item Abraham Lincoln collection. Um, we are very strong in Abraham Lincoln portraits, specifically photography of him. And we also um, have a copy of the 13th Amendment. There's only 15 um, nationwide, and we are one of the recipients of that. And so I would encourage you um, to come visit us at the University of St. Mary in the library, and we are happy to give tours. Um, you can also find our new digital collections online, and I'll share how to find those. So in terms of the, the journey um, for this grant, we had to write what collection we would be doing and what kind of area of that collection we'd be focusing on first. And so we chose to focus on um, the portraits of Abraham Lincoln. And when I applied for this grant, uh, we only had one other librarian here at the University of St. Mary. So we are a very small shop. Um, I was extremely fortunate to be able to hire a special collections librarian after we received this grant. And so the grant monetary value is around $20,000. And um, we were able to receive with that a um, 
a two-year subscription to shared shelf um, digitization software. And then we receive the third year um, at half price. So we, are, we have actually completed two years or we're on the second year right now of the grant cycle. And um, also as part of the grant, um, the recipients of the grant um, are able to attend consortium meetings once a year in Washington, D.C. And a huge focus of the grant is to do teaching and learning on campus, and it's a collaboration grant. And so one librarian and one faculty member um, are part of the grant team. And so um, I designated on the slide here the individuals who are working um, at each school. And so um, for Gloria at Ottawa, Dr. Kelly Fish Greenlee is part of sociology department, and Ryan Lewis, part of the Forensics Honor Society, are partnering with Gloria on her part of the grant. She'll describe this a little bit more as we get through the slides. Because we are focusing on Abraham Lincoln, um, what better person than our um, actual American America historian, United States historian here at St. Mary. And so Dr. Kyle Anthony is partnering with me. And he went with me to the first um, conference in Washington, D.C., as did my special collections librarian, Lindsay Shetler. And so we have now um, returned from the second consortium meeting um, that was just held um, in September. And so um, we are very happy to answer any questions that you might have about, about those meetings um, and how we have learned what other libraries um, and universities are doing with the digitization software. Um, I can't um, not put a shout out to our implementation managers. Um, Ottawa's was Allison Smith, and the implementation managers and migration managers were helpful to help us figure out what we needed to do on our end to actually scan the items appropriately, um, be able to upload those to shared shelf, and then how do we actually create exhibits um, from the digital objects that we have found. And so Gloria can speak a little bit more about what um, she has done um, with her implementation manager, but um, ours was just instrumental in getting us up and running. Going to the next slide. Okay, so um, I did mention that um, we have worked with Dr. Kyle Anthony um, to develop the work plan. We hired Lindsay Shetler, um, who had a specialty area um, from the University of Colorado in digitization. Um, and so it was just a wonderful kind of um, group effort that we did at the University of St. Mary. We also received administrative support to have a graduate assistant um, participate as well um, in the process. And so our graduate assistant, Whitney, um, has been the one actually digitizing all of the work. I did put my library's um, website listed here, and I would encourage all of you to go to our website and click on Special Collections, and it walks through all of the digitization efforts that we are currently doing, and also gives information on how to come and visit us. Here is a picture of Whitney, and she is in our digitization center. We have a very small place. It's actually just part of Lindsay's office. Um, we are such a small shop that we are just learning how, how this works. Um, we have a flatbed scanner, but we do not have an overhead scanner, and so that's something that we are currently working on um, trying to apply for grants for that. Here is a slide, a screenshot of Shared Shelf Commons. So Shared Shelf Commons is open to anyone and you can um, go and view our images. These are the photographs and some of the portraits that we have of Abraham Lincoln. And I would encourage you to take a look at this. These are freely available. Anyone is welcome to download the files and use them. Um, we have uploaded over 400 results as of today um, that have to do with Abraham Lincoln or the Civil War. And so I'd encourage you to do that. So um, 
some other things that we have done. Here's an image of Abraham Lincoln that we have. Um, something that we have fun um, sharing is that a lot of our images show him as younger man um, without a beard. And so he does have a beard in, in most of the images that you see. And so we have um, some fun stories to talk about how did he get um, to grow his beard for the majority of his presidency. And there's some fun um, stories here um, that we share on tours. I'm happy to share that if, if people would like to. Um, I did also um, link right here in the tiny URL to our Shared Shelf Commons um, site. And so you can also um, go there and, and view that. So the Shared Shelf site is really functioning for us as a repository. It does not really allow us to do any kind of digital exhibit curation. Um, so we had to kind of figure out what are we going to do? Are we going to use Drupal Gardens? Are we going to use Omeka? And so we actually, over the course of the last year, have been exploring that. So this is our Drupal Gardens um, kind, of, kind of exploration. And you can see Whitney again. Um, you can see all of our collections. And we have been actually doing some student digital projects through service learning exercises here with our first year students. The first year students actually worked with Lindsay and Special Collections and curated their own exhibit. And so um, here at the University of St. Mary, we're working really hard to do high impact practices um, that increase engagement and retention. And so um, part of that is to work with around 10 service learning students for freshmen who are freshmen, and they actually work with Whitney and Lindsay and curate their own digital collection. And so we are playing around with that um, in Drupal Gardens and then also in Omeka. And so we have several different kind of um, platforms that we're trying to figure out um, which one will be the best one that we focus on. And so these are just some images that you can see. We not only have the Abraham Lincoln collection, but we also just are the recipients of a Civil War collection as well. Um, that has a focus, um, interestingly enough, on women and spies. And so we have a couple very unique items that are um, women who served as spies in the Civil War. And um, we have some items that we are digitizing for that as well. And then we have a scripture collection, around 2,000 items. Um, and we have not really um, dived into that for digitization yet, but we will hope to do that in the near future. And so kind of our um, framework that we're exploring is to figure out what content management system that we'll be using. And so we're thinking of using archive space as that. And then what discovery platform? And we're, we're currently um, going with Omeka because of the ease of use. And then we will be exploring digital preservation software. We, we do not have a dark archive, and that is something that we will be wanting to, to figure out down the road and partnering with other schools possibly for that. So Shared Shelf is our beginning um, kind of foray into digitization. And we will probably keep that as um, one form of um, copies, um, trying to keep the model of lots of copies, um, keep stuff safe, of course, of course with locks. And um, moving forward into some kind of discovery platform that will help us um, reach out to people in a very easy manner. So here's an, an image of our um, archive space. Lindsay is playing in that. Um, and we are trying to um, add metadata to this as well and um, be able to um, keep copies of our materials using archive space. So um, that is just a brief overview of our, our journey here at St. Mary. Um, we look forward to our third year of participating in the consortium. Um, for digitization, um, teaching and learning through the Council of Independent Colleges and um, look forward to seeing where we go in the future. Um, we are coming up on our third year of using Shared Shelf and um, we anticipate, anticipate keeping that 
um, software going here and um, wanting to partner with other faculty across campus. So right now it's really librarian centric where we are running um, the digitization efforts for the campus through the library. But we do see potential collaborations with the theater department, with the art department, um, with the biology department. And so um, we hope to um, be doing that as well. So Gloria is going to um, move forward um, with the next part of our presentation, and I will mute myself and stop my share so that she can um, jump in. So um, here's your turn, Gloria. Um, so one of the things that was happening um, was that um, I was alone here at the library basically trying to do this project. Um, I was the lone wolf um, attempting something that was very new to me, even though I had uh, started to use Pass Perfect. Um, I had a very steep learning curve um, because I didn't know how to create records. Um, and the main thing was to learn how to build records um, in Shared Shelf. And so for almost a year, um, I was. Um, involved in doing the shared shelf demo um which is um the demo that allows um like if you're coming into the project um and you would work with um shared shelves um you know manager to be able to help you uh through the process and um so it was it was an interesting learning experience um let me show you for example i started out with just one singular record um and if and i'm and actually i shouldn't um, i can't click that so anyway um i started out with one singular record and then um i went from there um to being able to do other things um so one of the things that was interesting about this process for me was that um the collection one of the collections the kilba collection that was a yupik indian collection that was going to be part of this project um was um a collection that had been separated for about 115 years at the university here the library had a portion of the collection but um the biology department had another section of the collection um so for example, walrus tusks and, and jaw bones and those kinds of things. And we had never believed that that was part of the collection until we started reading up on um, the collection and when it had been given to the university and we actually found out that that was part of our collection. So we were able to um, take photographs and, and actually combine all the collections that the library had with those that had been missing for years. Um, that is now um, part of our group of um, items, um, objects that are um, online. <clears throat> um, and so um, we were able to not just photograph collections, but um, measure items that had never been measured before um, and, you know, basically digitize everything and, and get them online. Um, we can continue. One of the, um, the interesting things that I had to learn to do was how to migrate um, from Past Perfect where I had started, because Past Perfect is, a, is a, a software for very small museums. And that was all at the time that we could afford. Um, and so when we had originally started putting the Cuba collection online, um, that was what we were using. And so um, a larger, robust um, software now, um, I had to learn um, to be able to migrate from Past Perfect um, into ArtStore. Um, and as you can see, um, we were using Excel <clears throat> to be able to do that because you would actually download Excel from Past Perfect and all your items would be there and described. Um, and then um, you'd actually be able to go on and um you know start the migration well i had to get a great deal of help from um the migration manager because um i didn't um know how to do um a lot of excel related 
um, concatenations. Um, continue. Um, so for example, one of the things that I had to deal with was um, in past perfect, we had lots and lots of measurements, just so many measurements. Um, and what I had to do was combine all of those measurements. And um, when we had one record, we would need to be able to combine the measurements. For example, we'd have measurements in feet, um, in centimeters and so on. And um, it needed to be combined so that um, it would be easy to be able to see um, similar measurements for us for um, like one object or two objects um, and so um, and and kind of make it you know um, look very good um, on the screen um, and so um, what we had to do was concatenate um, all of our measurements um, by using Excel um, continue so as you can see this was um, some examples of the concatenations that we had to do. Um, continue. Well, one of the problems with this, um, this process that we had started, this, this um, new, um, something totally new for us, was that we didn't have any budget at all to be able to do this. Um, the um, the grant was twenty thousand dollars, but um, what we had to do was um, try and collaborate within the university and see how I could be helped because I had so many other things that I had to do. But this project was was number one because this was a grant, um, and so to be able to get help, um, I approached Pi Kappa Delta um, since their professor was one of those that was working with us and was wanting this project to, to, um, to happen. Um, and so we were able to get them to um, fund a, an Oculus position, um, even though it started out as, as a very small amount of time, 10 hours, um, it was really important for us to be able to take that step so that we could have someone extra to be able to work with us on this project and actually have someone who knew something about how to, um, to digitize and also how to uh, create the records that we needed them to do. Um, also, we started collaborating with um, the sociology department and the history department, and we got some student archives, uh, internships um, going, and um, every semester students have been working with us on the project, and we've had to teach them how to actually um, do the cataloging um, but I've had to, you know, go back on those records and actually make sure that what they're actually doing is correct because a number of them had difficulty with, um, you know, things like um, subjects and um, even titles. So, continue. Um, so, one of the things that we also had to do in Art Store with all of these additional staff was um, to basically manage um, IDs and passwords and make sure that staff was able to be able to um, to work at different levels of the collection. Um, so, for example, the archivist had full control, whereas students um, only had control of you know being able to put in the records, but they couldn't change some of the things that needed to be changed because they would not be administrators. So that was really important for us to be able to, to get to do that. Um, and um, we hadn't had that kind of control in Post Perfect before, which made it kind of a mess, but this was a lot easier now. Continue. So one of the, the challenges in learning how to use ArtStore was that we had to start building records from scratch for each of the collections. Um, and so I had to learn how basically um, to, um, you know, add and edit fields and um, create field labels. And, you know, the main thing was trying to figure out because at that point um, I had a collection that was from Past Perfect 
and it didn't have the same titles or um, record labels or field labels as um, Artstore had. And so uh, those actually had to be, be changed so that they actually fit. Um, and, and so we started mapping things. Uh, and that's on the next slide. Um, Gloria, you have about a couple minutes left. Okay. So we were mapping everything so that um, it worked for us and we were able to translate and, and move the collection. Um, everything was done, as you can tell, in Dublin Core. Continue. Um, so we have, we have, we started out with two teaching collections in Art Store. Um, the Henry Kilba collection and then Pi Kappa Delta collection. And at this point, we are now the Pi Kappa Delta um, National uh, Honor Society Repository, which is um, going to allow us to be able to um, add a lot more, probably a, quite a few more staff members because um, it's going to be a very much bigger amount of work to do than just um, our alpha chapter resources that we were going to put on. As you can see, there's a number of resources from the Kilbuck collection below that we um, described. Um, continue. Um, and so one of the main things that we get out of this is we also will be able to not just put our items on shared shelf, but DPLA, the Digital Public Library of America, will actually be harvesting records from our um, collections every month. Um, and that includes Daniel's collection as well. Continue. So out of this, what you can take away with you is that uh, these collections are available free and open, open access to everybody on Shared Child Commons. So you can actually go and use that. If you had classes in specific topic areas, you can look and see what kinds of collections are available that you can actually use for, uh, for your own teaching projects at your colleges and universities. Um, in subscribing to Art Store, what's really great is the ability to be able to also um, be harvested to DPLA. Um, it allows us to add video files and audio files and all kinds of interesting things. We haven't done any video files right now because we've got an error message that comes up, but I'm hoping that that will happen in the next few, um, few months because we have to add some transcripts, um, Native American transcripts. Um, and um, it's really enhanced. Um, it's really going to enhance our teaching and our scholarship in the future. I, I'm hoping that um, all of our classes here will be able to make use of um, everything that we are putting online um, at this at the present moment. All right. Thank you. Um, thank you, Gloria and Danielle. We have a question here for you, too. Um, what kind of flatbed scanner are you using at St. Mary's? As a second part to that question, what is an overhead scanner? Hear me? Okay, so um, we are looking um, to get an overhead scanner so that we can scan images that are too big to fit in our flatbed scanner and images that would be three-dimensional. Um, and we'd like to be able to scan some of the books that we have, um, but we don't want to break the spine um, to be able to use a flatbed scanner. And so we actually purchased an HP flatbed scanner that was professional grade. Um, I think we spent around $2,500 for that. An overhead scanner is much more expensive. Um, the ones that we've been looking at um, are BookEye, and I know several other institutions have those, and they, um, I think they started around $20,000. Okay, I see another question. Um, do you have web developer support at St. Mary's? So um, we do not. Um, we do have the support of um, our information technology department um, to be able to get uh, more um, space for saving our content, our digital content. However, um, 
we our web developers that are here at St. Mary's are used for our course management system. And so any kind of web development that we do um, in Omeka or in Drupal Gardens is actually by the librarians. And so my special collections librarian is working um, very much with that. Um, we were fortunate to have um, some individuals from our um, informatics program um, do an internship with us and they um, were part of the team to investigate Omeka and Drupal Gardens. And so um, in the event that we might have computer science interns um, through our undergraduate program, they would be helping with that. Very nice. Um, I'm really impressed. <laughs> We've got another question coming in here um, about how much do you pay for shared shelf per year and for how many images um, or what is the image limit um, from a, someone who works with small museums and would like to explore the option? Sure, sure. Um, I think it's going to be based on um, FTE um, and based on um, you know parameters set up. So I would encourage you to reach out to Shared Shelf um, and, and contact Shared Shelf right now um, with the grant. And um, Gloria and I are getting it for free, which is great. Um, but next year we will be paying half of the cost for our um, institutional size. And so it's going to be, it's going to vary. Um, um, but it is it is not um, too terribly expensive. So I would, um, I would encourage you um, to reach out to Shared Shelf um, and see if there's some kind of um, trial that you could um, try and see if it would be something useful. Um, just to add to that, I was looking um, because I wanted to see how much I would need to add to my budget. And it's between, I mean, for half price, it was gonna be about $5,000 for our FTE, um, which is um, not very big um, for this year. So yeah, I would also agree that you should reach out and um, it might be different for you depending on your FTE. Hey, okay. thank you both. Uh, we have another question now. What digital asset management system did you use and why? Um, I think you mentioned you were using Omeka, but we'd love to hear more about the why. Sure, this is Danielle at the University of St. Mary. Um, Shared Shelf also functions as that, so we were able to do that. Um, and then we are slowly transitioning to Omeka. And um, the reason we're using Omeka is really solely for the, um, the exhibit curation, how we can actually build exhibits within there. Um, and so I would encourage you to um, check out Shared Shelf because that may function for you as well, um, but then also Omeka. So I'd um, have you um, both look, have everyone look into that if, you, if you'd like. Um, and then I can address the next question in relation to St. Mary, um, how have we dealt with copyright? So within Shared Shelf, you can actually make local um, local collections that are only viewed by um, individuals at your IP address. And so there is a way that um, faculty um, and librarians can lock down um, collection viewing, say if it's something just for a class. Um, but we have not done that yet. All of our items are freely available um, because of the copyright. And so we are very careful right now to only put items that are in the public domain um, up on our shared shelf um, common site. But you can make local collections, and Gloria might speak to those, um, that are only locked down um, to your institutional's IP address. Um, so we have a collection, um, uh, a Native American collection of items that um, we're having to lock down because um, there's a lot of sensitive information in it. It's actually uh, transcriptions or uh, transcripts of um, videos that were actually done um, where the tribe was, where the Ottawa tribe was actually interviewed about specific things related to Ottawa University, but also history and so on. Um, and our professor has asked that they, you know, they close it because she doesn't want, she doesn't feel that the tribe would want everything out there. So um, Shared Shelf is allowing us to be able to have a closed section 
um, where it would only be available to um, students that are actually in a class and that would be able to use it, but not to the public, and it would not be harvested by DPLA. But copyright-wise, um, we do have a copyright statement that gets put on each of the objects or each of the um, items that we put online, um, and we're allowed to create that, um, that copyright statement. Great. Thank you so much, Danielle and Gloria. We have one more question. It's about all we have time for. Uh, will you be able to support the current infrastructure you've built and the special collections librarian position once the grant is over? Thank you. This is Danielle again from the St. Mary. Um, yes, um, I did have a retirement, and so I built the special collections librarian position um, based on that retirement. So that is a position that is not going away and um, has just proved um, very beneficial for the entire campus, not only with the digitization that we're doing, the projects that we're doing for that, but also um, just increasing the um, impact of our special collections um, on teaching and learning here on campus. And so Lindsay has um, created wonderful partnerships with multiple departments across campus. Um, and then, um, it, you know, the verdict's still out on if we will keep Shared Shelf um, down the road when it's not um, subsidized for us. Um, so we're still investigating that. Um, we want to make sure that we have the financial means to keep that going, um, but we will be still exploring Omeka and other tools as well. So um, we still have about a year and a half, so we'll, we'll cross that bridge um, probably in the next year. Wonderful. Thank you so much, um, Danielle and Gloria. Um, that is all the time we have for questions right now. So if someone has additional questions, turn them in and we will email them to the presenters. And now it is about time for us to step away, um, set up for our next presentation. And thank you again to everyone for um, the presentation and for your questions.